So how are you Hello. doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So sure. I think we can start then. Yeah, okay, perfect. As I looked it up, you are the visual effects artist turned director, and at the same time, you are the founder and the CEO of the Blunt Digital. Um, so how did it all start? How did you come to this idea of creating a company? And um, I started early. Uh, I was born and raised in Dubai, uh, in Abu Dhabi, in the UAE. Oh, seriously, so, my sister works there. She lives there. <laughs> It's it's taken a while. Um, I was born and raised there. Uh, had my basic schooling and education there. And once that was done, uh, due to some uh, my dad's health issues, we had to move back, and we moved back to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, when you're you know like brought up and raised abroad, uh, and you come back to a different country which doesn't have the same culture, it's a, it's a bigger culture shock that you get. So. At first, it was it was difficult here to kind of uh, you know understand what what the dynamics of the city are and the country are and and the norms here. It was a different world altogether, completely based on what it is abroad. Uh, I was always like fond of drawing at the time, uh, and I just used to like keep on sketching uh, like a, a stupid car with a signal and stuff like that. So I remember my mom has a uh, like. Uh, a lot of, I would say, I guess hundreds and hundreds of papers of the same drawing over and over again. So, so that's what uh, got me um, into art. My dad is basically a painter. Uh, he, uh, although he's an automobile engineer, but uh, his hobbies lie in abstract paint. So I kind of got it from that. I, I grew up seeing him paint and you know creating paintings, and he used to have um, exhibitions. So. It was fun watching him, and then, like at the age of 16, um, I was in a situation where I had to like um, be the elder of the house and go and get a job or something because my dad was he had such a heart attack, and you know we had to uh, like uh, get on our feet like real quick. So that's how it all started, basically. I the only thing I knew was how to draw, and uh, I just. Started doing internships at places. Started draw. Started basically. I started as a web designer. I used to like design, sketch out templates. You know, animation always excited me. Uh, the country I was in, uh, in Pakistan at that point, uh, animation was like uh, <laughs> it was like voodoo in the country. Uh, people thought that this is not an actual field, and they thought that you know anybody who like kind of dives into this is a little stupid. He shouldn't be doing it. He'll probably you know and they didn't respect animators and stuff like that. So I, I enrolled at, an, uh, at a university uh, earlier on. Uh, there's a university here uh, and uh, started to study like animation and you know, went through some basic studies of like anatomy and uh, I was doing a job and then, you know, trying to do studies and you know, then also trying to practice. It's a little hard to like balance and juggle so many things at the same time. But I just like skipped university and started like the whole self route, you know, like self learning. It's been like 21 years now uh, doing this as a profession. Uh, I started off as a visual effects artist and then I did uh, visual effects for uh, a number of Hollywood features as a freelancer. I worked in a lot of companies as a creative director, uh, as a vice president, you know, like working your way up. So it took a while. And it's it's been tough. Self learning journey is always the more harder one, and you yeah, like, you know true. you yeah. find a lot of people that you know don't believe in what you do, and you you are kind of alone. You know you need to keep the belief on your own self. You know because there are going to be naysayers at at any given time. You know like they're going to always like try to put you down, try to say that this is shit what you're doing. You know whatever you're making is crap. So. I guess every artist has to go through those struggles and I did the same way. It was a little harder without any support uh, um, because uh, people from the industry would also not support newcomers and uh, and that's kind of a bummer. Uh, now the world has changed, you know, like now uh, like having festivals and, mm. and all these kind of things where people kind of show their craft, a lot of universities 
uh, you know support filmmakers they've got their own festivals in house there's a lot of stuff happening now uh, mm-hmm. with the advent of social media and everything and even if you don't have anybody you've got social media right you can just like post something up there you mm-hmm. you might get a little bit of feedback from your peers but back in the day it was way tough at that point as far as the question goes the company was just uh, intuition i had one day i just like skip left my job my boss loved me at that time and i just went to him and i said it's like i can't do this anymore um, it's a great place i love working here um, but you know it's not that something that i want i've been doing this for so long i want to do my you know do my own thing mm-hmm. so i just started very uh, the company started very small um, just me nobody else and although uh, at the forefront it was a company but at the start it was just me you know like trying to connect each wire and, you know like just trying to get everything done you know the the last minute when you have to send a client some re- uh, release and the internet starts stops to work and uh, so i I've, i've kind of faced those kind of issues at the at the start because like people trust you as a company and when they give you work and if they like your work but yeah. if you're just one person it's it's really hard to like manage a company being one person mm. you know so we kind of grew over the years it's a bundle digital now including this year has been 9 years uh um, we've been going strong we've uh, we've set up in dubai as well recently purely based out of pakistan uh, we've got like around 20 artists that are working with us and uh, and god bless we're just moving forward so are you at the moment living in pakistan right at the moment yes Uh uh-huh. Why didn't you move to Dubai? Basically because uh, I've spent a lot of time here. Um my parents are here. Uh uh-huh. that's the big thing. Yeah. Uh they've gotten old. So mm-hmm. I, I I didn't feel the need to, you know, leave them in their old age when they didn't leave me at my smaller age. Yeah. So I'm like pretty attached to them. I I tend to take care of them and uh I do travel. uh because i have a uae office now with my partner uh sayed naman rizvi he is uh, he joined uh blunt in the middle of the years he came on board as a partner so now he looks at the pakistan operations and um i travel to uae at times or sometimes he does so we've kind of like divided the work we provide visual effects services color grading all the post production services Mm-hmm. Recently we delved into the part where I just wanted to get into films and like you know start doing my own production. The I am home was like uh probably the first thing we tried out. God bless it came out well. We just secured three awards as well uh, at the Indo French Festival for best international short film, best thriller and uh, debut filmmaker for the award. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised to be honest <laughs> really yeah, uh, so uh did anyone support you like how did it happen did you tell your parents your friends like i want to be a director i'm going to make a film how did it happen i had discussed this with my with my dad once that you know like i want to i've done visual effects for so long and now i feel that i have a company that is you know capable enough to kind of keep on doing that and uh i just feel that the the artist um the exploration part is kind of dying you know like because if you keep on doing the same thing over and over again which already knows kind of muscle memory for you now yeah. so all right like post production and bigger films do have a lot of challenges in that but if you've got a talented team and crew that you're working with they would probably suggest you better you know so i trust my team a lot and you know they come up with these great solutions to do all of this for me like film has always been the ultimate content right whether it's like mm-hmm. and i wanted to do that for so long but i never felt uh, the kind of confidence to ever you know go through with it is it always kind of scared you know like you see all this great work out there and you know like artists are usually you know pretty self critical about themselves usually so whatever i do i just it like, looks like shit to me compared to what's happening out there so but suddenly you know like my dad said that you you like crave this idea for so long you know and uh why don't you offer it so, you know like i had no intentions of like of like ever getting an award or even completing it to be honest i just said this i just tried out you know let's see what happens like there's no harm in trying 
so we went through that route and it was fun it was really exciting and you know i felt that passion that i felt like way back like i guess that started to come back to me and i had directed a couple of commercials i even directed the last commercial for mall of palestine in dubai so i was always hired by people to direct commercials uh, so that was something else but like doing your own thing and then having the expectation that you know in this they are like masterpieces out there uh, how good is it going to be like you know is it like capable enough to like even go to a festival like then i just said to myself but we just going to give it our best what we can do and let's see how it comes out mm-hmm. so uh, as far as i understand this is your first creation as a director like i mean your own creation not for someone but for but for yourself yeah uh what did you inspire them just to come and do this like uh was there anyone who told you something or like you told that you had this idea but why did you decide to finally do it basically the the concept uh, uh like a rough concept was written i i wrote it like around about two to three years back as i said mentioned before um it was on the idea of Uh, like you know how would isolation feel like uh, i have lived like half of my life in isolation myself you know uh, because being an artist you're you're usually like always in your head or you're kind of living alone you kind of face challenges on your own end as well you know like when you're too much isolated for a very long time uh you know things do get sometimes so how do you put that on film how do you make people feel that how do you do it with with something where you don't have dialogues you look at a character and you kind of i wanted to make people feel as if they're inside the, the reason why we shot a lot of hand here and i wanted to keep the camera very close to him and he's like pretty much in 90% of the film is like almost like in profile because i wanted the audience to connect to him and when he like flips at the end so you could kind of feel that uh, i wanted something that could be driven with sound Uh, and emotions more than narrative so that's why the whole film has this one scene in which they actually talk it was like more getting inside the head of the person who actually goes to this what does he feel or how does he like react to all of this happening to him you know like the the tagline we have is like facing your demons how far does one have to go like mentally to realize that he has these demons and you know at one point he just has to accept them which is the end of the film where he kind of uh, breaks the fourth wall looks at the audience and, and kind of gives that smile to tell you that I've accepted it I know that's happened so that was kind of the idea and uh, it kind of grew into something more what I had on paper was a little different uh can you say that this kind of topic of your demons is more common for the artists or people of the creative world or is it something that is applicated to everyone I I could have given a different answer if this was like a year back or something like probably 2019 maybe one and a half year back or something but now the world has changed like with with, with covid and everything that has happened mm-hmm. I think that this this film has related to a lot of people uh, in a very different way because the way I imagined it uh and the way I made it uh, this was made at a time where um covid didn't even happen it didn't exist uh this was shot in 2019 and we released it after post late 2020 uh but it just blew up after that and uh, when when this like covid thing actually became real so so many people asked me like hey is this a covid film is that, are you trying to showcase like people sitting at their home going to see i never thought of it that way it relates to people more in the current situation okay now uh, the, the i'm home is taking a completely different meaning than what it was supposed to be As an artist I would never want to do a cheap stunt where you see the world going through an epidemic and you would just want to cash that out as business. So that's just bullshit to me. Clearly it took a life of its own which I didn't intend to do. Mm-hmm. That's true. I also think so. If not Covid inspired you to create this film based on the topic of personal demons then what? I think loneliness like when uh, uh-huh. uh people live in separate countries or separate parts of the world because I've been through that and uh you're on your own for a very long time you know the struggle the hustle the daily life you know? and uh right you 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 kind of know people you can have relations whatever but you know at the end of the day 
uh, it's not that fulfilling because for an artist like his work is more fulfilling than anything else but right? so there's a point when you know isolation gets to you you start to feel a little insane like in the head and uh, that toll could be heavy if people don't check upon you and now uh, the world has become that where the people uh, don't check up on you like they wouldn't even check up on their parents like everybody has this excuse of being busy you know like come on like 3 minutes a day 4 minutes a day anybody could take out to you just showing somebody a whatsapp message even means a lot so this was kind of the the, the central idea of it i have whom is supposed to be something bigger and this is like a portion that we had made i have the story which uh, can be expanded but only if somebody's interested i would ever want to go to that route like probably to an ott platform or something like that where i would want to push it and you know work on it even more to you know flesh it out completely where a lot of questions can be answered all those questions that a lot of people have seen um i am woman they have um i could answer them in a more you know elaborate way but only if somebody would be willing to you know like kind of hear them definitely yeah Uh so it going back to the film uh by which criteria did you pick the actors you've already told that uh it was pretty hard to find the person who can fully oh, yeah. express the emotions Oh uh, that's a interesting story because uh I I met this guy his name is Tabrez and uh a lot of people don't know about him is that he's he's wanted to act for uh more than 15 years he's like tried so hard but nobody ever came in he's a doctor by profession and i get to meet this guy through my partner uh partner gets to know him and we just sit down and have a cup of coffee and at that time i am almost kind of in the works and we were developing it so i meet him and you know he's just like very chill kind of dude very i doesn't look like a doctor in any possible way i'm like like dude are you seriously a doctor He's like, yeah, I'm a doctor. I've got a clinic and everything, and you know, I, he's a chiropractor, by the way. So, and a pretty good one. So, uh, I met him for the first time. We went through a couple of things, and I just like saw his passion for films. We had this like three-hour-long conversation, and he was just talking about films. And I was like, this is the guy I want to work with. You know, I just like offered him like right there on the table before even my coffee finished. I just said, like, do do you want to act? he freaked out because he had never ever got the chance to act he completely freaked out he like no no i can't act like, like he, he didn't have the self belief that he could act you know so i told him the script and i explained him the day we were on set and i told him that this is what you want to do and he almost like had left i am home because he said that i can't pull this off this is too complicated i can't do it because i've never been in front of the camera that way as an actor and uh, i cannot do it So it was just like about you know like having the same wave length pumping uh, pumping that kind of passion into him because he had that but due to this constant refusal throughout his life for the past 15 years that, that kind of took over him so his, his, his like ambitions had kind of gone somewhere else and he was like a complete uh, i would say a doctor and he had mm-hmm. left that part of him but he kind of uh, got into the groove he did a couple of test shoots and then he started shooting day 1 day 2 and he started to perform you know and now when he looks at it and we're getting these accolades for i am home he's like he's like surprised he's like go what did you make me do here okay what did you uh, what did you push me into i never knew that this could be this big i was like dude i didn't even know this would be big. so finally his his belief has been reinstated and i'm so happy uh, that i got to work with him because he was a blank slate and i could push whatever emotion i wanted onto him and he would have uh completely no he was he wasn't reserved about anything that uh i will not do this you know like how professional actors are uh, constantly fight with the director because they don't want to do a certain thing or yeah. uh, you know they, they would, see differently yeah yeah they see differently or you constantly have to like kind of you know uh carry them around uh, to like finish a certain thing Uh, so they can be a pain in the ass to be honest but um, he wasn't like he was a blank slate he said like just just let me know you want me to jump over the sofa like let me know dude i'll do it you know you want me to drag on the floor i'll do it. so he he was a real sport and i i really pushed him hard uh, to a point where he like literally broke down 
but that's what I wanted. I wanted him to break down in front of the camera so I could capture that. That was a really evil, but it worked. And do you know if he wants to continue his acting career after oh, your yeah, film? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. He's like, he's, he just wants to do act now. He's like continuing like his bread and butter, which is like being a doctor, but like he just wants to act now. Uh, yeah. Well, but anyway, no one's perfect. <laughs> I'm sure there were no some challenges. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. That's a difficult question because I don't know where to start. Uh, there were so many challenges. Um, like when you like, you know, like if you go into a full blown, blown production where everything is set for you and you're just supposed to come and sit as a director and just do your thing. But when you like do production on your own, it's mm -hmm. really hard because like you're responsible for pretty much everybody on set. Like, we didn't have like a massive crew, but we had like around 15 to 18 people on set with, and, and the actors as well, which like make it like around 20 people a set. Uh, the biggest challenge that we had was um, was the location. Like, where do we want to shoot? Uh, what kind of place would not look too modern? And I do not want something that looks like really old. How do I show it as a house of somebody who's living alone? But the house needs to have some kind of monotony to it. And I found this place and I said, like, this is it. We just just need to change a couple of places. And the fun part is that there was a family living there and was their house. So we reallocated them to another space till the time we were shooting. And uh, they were pretty cool about it that they did it. Nobody leaves their house. You know, nobody would do that. The challenge there was it was a family apartment. So it was kind of decorated and and rigged that way, you know, like you would have a room of kids with like A, B, C, D and stuff written on it. And like, like there was no way of like hiding that from the camera because like wherever you would have a wide shot, you would see that. You know, so how do we shoot that? So it was difficult. We tried to play with lighting and, and a lot of stuff. We tried to move things around in the house, like shift sofas and do stuff. Uh, and the space was also an issue because I wanted to do these wide and broad moves. It would have like handheld moves and stuff. But we didn't have that much longevity to pull it off. But we did like all these uh, these techniques. We, we used wider uh, lenses for like longer shots, and then we used like really really tight lenses, like 85 and stuff, uh, on like handheld rigs. Plus we had a 20 man crew, so to like fit 20 people, they were all just shooting in that space. We had to like walk through a whole corridor, and then do the whole thing in one take. I remember that it was my DP, and me, and there were there was my gaffer. And we used to constantly be moving behind the camera. Like my whole crew used to be like shifting with the camera as the camera was moving. So everybody had to all constantly be behind the camera. And we had a lot of mess ups because like somebody would just come in between or somebody's arm would kind of pop in. So it was a lot of frustration, to be honest. Uh, lighting the place was also a challenge because the, the whole apartment had like basic windows. Like you, you couldn't get like too much source light. And we had to like move a lot of furniture and, and do a lot of stuff to kind of mimic the same light on the other end. A lot of people say that it was like, uh, they look at it and they say that we shot it with a lot of lights. We only had like three lights on side. That's about it. We shot the whole thing with three lights. Plus we were, we were like on the, the 11th or the 12th floor. The apartment was so high up. You can't suspend lights out of the window because every window had grills and you couldn't like put anything outside it. Were there any problems with the contract with the actors or with the crew, like with the communication? Um, no, no, even it's surprising. That's what I said in the start. It's surprising because yeah, that's really surprising. Have a lot of that's very surprising. Uh -huh. uh, you have a lot of uh, issues, especially with the actors for yeah. doing something which is so like intense. Um, but this guy, like the Braves, he was like a godsend and he was a champ about it. Like, if we we shot like 40 hours straight for two days, one day. Uh, we started for like probably 9 a.m. in the morning and we wrapped shoot for the, those scenes uh, after 48 hours. And he kept going with us for 48 hours without like even a nap for like an hour. So like th that's the level of passion he had. Like I yeah. am crazy when I, when I start working. I don't get to sleep much, like probably three hours, four hours a day. But he had the same energy. Uh, without that, it wouldn't have been possible. You know, my partner 
uh, Numan. We've all been up for like ages, like doing this. It was a pretty intense shoot. My own company, Blunt Digital's production crew. So these guys are like my backbone, right? If we're shooting together, they would never back down on me. Not even my sport boy would ever back down. Mm-hmm. So I'm blessed to have a team that they, that they trust uh, whatever I do, and you can just feel blessed that people, you know, kind of like the way you work and they trust your vision that they want to go with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just thank them today. It's because of all of their effort, you know. Like, I, I pushed them really hard to do something, uh, which is which was a bit challenging, and uh, they came through. That's that's really great. Yeah, uh, I've seen a couple of posts on the Instagram, I guess, um, with your film in the news or whatever. Could you tell yes, more yeah. about that? Uh, it's a news channel here in uh, in Pakistan. It's called Bol News. It's a It's a huge channel, and uh, they did a press feature on us after us getting nominated in around like seven to eight festivals now, mm-hmm. uh, including ISAWF, which is yours. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's amazing because uh, they wanted to do this press feature on us because that it's been a while. There has been no film that has gone from Pakistan, which is a short film, which has been. you know acclaimed or nominated in so many categories internationally so this was unique to them and at the time they wanted to do it because this is a nomination coming out from our country by our creators so they were very sweet that they you know supported us that way they covered us uh, on on the main headlines or prime time uh, telling that we won these three awards cinema here is we have a lot of you know like cinema goers here But the kind of content that's made here, um, it's very, um, I would say, if you've ever seen Indian content, right? So uh, there are a lot of people that think that 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 is a successful business model, and uh, all the filmmakers here they just want to copy that kind of idea. They just mm. copy. There's a template. So every Pakistani film needs to have a song, needs to have mm. a hero that runs in slow mm-hmm. motion, you mm-hmm. know. He, he needs to be strong enough to you know flip a car on his own you know mm-hmm. and, and do all those crappy kind of things so mm-hmm. the audience is kind of bored with all of that a, a lot yes, of audience yes. especially internationally yes. i guess it's kind of a very local yes. thing yeah very local thing they hate it they mm-hmm. all say the same things like why the hell uh, are we making all of this why don't we make stuff like this I'm like we don't make stuff like this because that's not uh, an existing model. Um, mm-hmm. They have this idea of doing a film this way because it gives a certain amount of business, and and you have an audience that would love to watch that kind of thing. They would go to the cinema. You would have a certain amount of ticket sales, and the person who's putting in the money, he would rather do a film like this than do a film like I Am Home or something else, like something that's being done in the West. So. So for me, the 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 biggest thing was to kind of break this uh, norm That's and right. show people, show people that our country can see something else can be done and it can get acclaimed. It can be loved by people abroad. Honestly, I I never even had imagined even in my wildest dreams that I would ever get nominated or even let alone receive an award. You know, like that's a surprise to me. Even for my whole team, it's a surprise. But um, I'm I, I'm just humbled by the encouragement from the international community that they they, they end up seeing this and and they acknowledge it at such a level. Uh, even I I S A W F was so uh, I'm humbled by them giving us a nomination in like all these categories and accepting it. We have so much talent here, you know, like we have such good people that are coming out, good filmmakers coming out, and they're these kids that are really aspiring and 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 want to be like these great filmmakers. but they also get stuck up in the system mm-hmm. because they know that you know like if this is their bread and butter how do you navigate that space in the country because you need to earn either mm-hmm. you have two options either you do a job or uh, and 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 get paid or if you want to be a filmmaker you have to follow the rules of what a producer has to say mm-hmm. because otherwise you're not going to get money unless you're like super super rich and you know or you have a lot of money and you can make a film on your own But then, mm-hmm. who's going to like market it? Who's going to market it? How is it going to go to cinemas? Who's going to distribute it? Because mm-hmm. people uh, would even back down on distribution because they would say mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this doesn't 
the song oh this looks too mature oh this is a great film but this is like too western it's not for our for it's not for us but the new generation does and there are a couple of people that are actually uh, trying to make a change and i'm just happy to you know kind of lend my hand to the change and try to do stuff that is a little out to to put people in this country at ease to see pakistan can also do it people here have the knowledge to do it mm-hmm. and and who says that it's not seen anywhere in the world you're mm-hmm. a problem prominent country and everybody sees your work but if you put shit work out there nobody's going to see it so then there's mm-hmm. no point in complaining mm-hmm. i'm not saying that i have done the best amount of work i've at least tried to do something out of the norm of the country mm-hmm. uh, i'm just happy I've been a part of it how do you explain why like the government or the society or whatever uh creates this norm of this films like in india why can't you create something different which will be supported by the government or whatever the only people to blame to be honest are not the filmmakers not the producers and not the government uh, are the people if you want to change either start doing it or stop seeing it stop exactly. supporting that kind of cinema yeah. and that's how you can change i feel that you know like there's a certain uh, there's a certain type of filmmaker right he, they probably invented the style right the indian style of cinema or you could say the pakistani style of cinema or whatever uh, there's also this these this tamil industry and all these other industries that also do the same thing mm-hmm. but you know somebody like brought this new style of cinema first time worked out it, it did great with business and did great on the box office and then over the years people started to replicate the same template and it worked out i don't think that this is this was ever uh, an initiative by the government because our government is like pretty open about go ahead and, and not do this they would always support good content it's about the people that have the money which mm-hmm. are the producers mm-hmm. you know uh producers are the people that firstly will obviously get your film off the ground right because because if you don't have the budget making a film is expensive uh, exactly. even the smallest film is expensive unless yeah you're doing a indie film you're doing it by a cell phone or you have a camera and you just shoot it yourself that yeah. is a guerrilla style filmmaking but if you if you want to make a film that you need a, a little budget right at least the smallest budget but you still need some and if you're looking for like a lister actors or even a b lister actor he wouldn't come on board unless you have like a proper producer or somebody on board because he wouldn't agree to an indie film they are very little actors and i've seen these uh, a lot of big name a lister actors but that's all happening in the west where they would do a small film with no money just because they love the content it's not like the sale uh, here uh, actors only do it for the money to be very honest mm-hmm. uh, uh, they only do it for the money they don't uh, they, they don't consider the content too much because there are some actors who uh, just want to pay their bills at the end of the day they don't care what the content is so they want to da- they have to dance they'll dance they want to like showcase that they've they've fallen in love probably for the 70th time in this 100th film they'll do it again because like they're like a household name now in that genre and nobody else can take their place is because that they kind of have like a leverage over every other coming new actor because they've done it so many times and people love them on screen doing that so they will always be uh the people that are going to sell the tickets for the producers and the distributors and they will always be the people that they're going to take to make the same kind of film again and again and again because a lot of people everybody has their talk about the whole spree about like you know Netflix and Amazon Prime and everybody wants to do something for them or everybody watches like Netflix it's supposedly more of like a cool thing it's like oh you watch Netflix yeah i'm cool because that's why i watch Netflix yeah that's just fashion yeah. kind of yeah yeah it's like a fashion now i'm not saying that Netflix has the most perfect stuff it's like a generic audience content right so they have everything for everybody that's the model and you can't blame them because they are a service throughout the world they have to like provide to every kind of person like all these films like films of tartowski and kubrick and scorsese ridley scott I, i love them you know like even alfred hitchcock but people would talk about it but they would never do something about it you know they would still go to that same love story which is like on uh, in the theater and you know like probably even if you have like an alfred hitchcock semi kind of rip off in the cinema right next to it they will still go and watch that film which has the music and the dance so you yourself are promoting that then why do you complain about it 
So that's yeah. about it. You know, like like an audience makes a film. The audience makes an It's actor. The content, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. audience is the king for content, right? Yeah. So they don't stop it themselves. You know, as a certain like eighty percent of the audience still wants that. How do you generally feel about your creation? Like, are you confident in it, or are there any things you would like to correct at the moment when you see the final oh. version? Trust me, everything. Whenever I look back <laughs> at my own work, <laughs> whenever I look back at my own work, I just want to do something better. Like there are so many things that I could have done. Uh-huh. Um, when you look at it, you kind of look at it and you say, like, you know, I could have done this. But uh, I like heavily criticize my own work. Looking back at it, I would say that yeah, there, there are tons of things I would have changed. But maybe it wouldn't have been yeah, it wouldn't have been I am home then. It would have been something else. Like when you try to do something one way, it becomes a thing of its own. But when you try to go ahead and change it, so then it becomes something else. You know, it kind of loses its rawness. I would say. Uh, there's a saying I forgot from who it was. It was like, uh, "Art is not finished; it's left." Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I am home is the perfect example. It was like literally left. I ended up. My editor got crazy while the film was being edited. and i personally edited the film like five times from this from the top to the end every time i would do the whole edit watch it i hated it and i would delete it i didn't even keep it because i didn't want to take from it and then i would do the edit again and then again so probably this was the fifth version that went out so mm-hmm. even while i was i remember the time when the, the team was about to post it and i was shaking it's like i think so we need to change something and they were like no it's done we did it like five <laughs> times you can't do it again we're posting it right now I am happy uh, mm-hmm. because of all of the love that has gotten from around the world. So that kind of gave me that confidence, uh, and I'm like, very happy. And I thank everybody for that. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, you've taken this topic of personal demons, like from your personal life. Uh, <coughs> how how do you feel about that? You kind of shared piece of your soul with the world, isn't it? Kind of scary. Or- It is. It is. That, that's the reason. That, that's one of the reasons I was kind of shaking before it was posted. So artists are like sensitive people, and uh, it's difficult to like put something that you've put in a lot of effort into. Plus, uh, it has a piece of you in it. You know? At the start, where when he leaves home and comes back to an empty house, it kind of reminded me a lot about how I was at a point where I would go leave an empty house and then come back. to an empty house and then sit on a sofa or some place and then chat with my friends mm-hmm. and ages you know like that was the only outlet i had uh when i would be alone you know and the, the the only partner that you had at that point was either your work or a television running in the background uh and the reason i used to put uh, the television on was because i wanted some kind of noise in the house mm-hmm. to kind of give me a feeling that there's somebody there you know a lot of people do that Yes, so, yes, that's true. Yeah, I did yeah. myself. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh so that kind of reminds me about a lot of the the the, the age of struggle and I'm not, I'm not saying by any means that the hustle is still not on. I'm, I'm still hustling. I still work a lot. But still I'm in a different position from where I was like say 15 years back, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it was tough at that point, you know. That's back true. then I I I didn't have the kind of uh, I would say mental strength or I didn't have the understanding or the knowledge that you know like you have to do it yourself you know you can't you know rely on other people so so parts of that film is definitely taken from some of my own experiences um and losing your sanity when you're kind of like trying to question yourself every day you know Mm-hmm. and looking at yourself in the bathroom mirror and kind of thinking is okay by am i looking okay like you know mm-hmm. have i rested enough am i eating enough it's like you you constantly talking to yourself so the film has hints of it but it's, it's not like a full blown thing it's a thing of its own but it does have imprints of parts of my life yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if talking about social media you also have some shots about that in the film Uh, do you think that social media really helps people to communicate to kind of find someone not to feel lonely or it uh develops your demons and helps them to kind of live in yourself 
social media is uh, is the demon itself to be I honest <laughs> uh, um you know there's some things that you kind of feel good about with technology kind of growing like like we're having this conversation right now if it wasn't for technology we couldn't you know like yeah yeah that's sitting, we're, we're kind of setting worlds apart right now but to me like even today is magic you know like how we do it like just by clicking a button it just happens yeah but the rest of it i i believe the social media has has controlled it controls lives to be honest it controls friendships now it controls relationships um you know it's like that episode on black mirror i watched once where you know people would give credit to people just because how good they sound in person i feel that age is coming like i think in the next i wouldn't be surprised in the next 15 years you know i would get to see that the people giving scores to people on their face you know and people are reluctant to say what's in their heart because so social media is, is has taught people how to pose you know has taught people how to be uh, an avatar of themselves i don't want to take names but i have so many people on social media that pose to be something completely else and they talk to me or talk to anybody else on social media in a completely different way but uh, but when you meet them you know they have a completely different persona but they would like try to act all cool on social media uh and that's the that's the demon you know like that's that's when you kind of tell them just like dude you're living a lie you know and they don't want to accept it they don't want to accept it so i just believe that social media first there used to be this school bullying thing right i think so everybody's gone through school bullying but well, i have uh but now it's social media bullying right i feel that uh bigger entities organizations uh huge directors filmmakers even people at that scale are not safe because any random dude can just get up in the morning brush his teeth without even you know making a coffee he could just put a post on twitter regarding some company and then that company is in question you know he would probably be getting that death threats in his like messages and emails and what what not Mm-hmm. and i don't i don't see a way of that ever changing i just see it's it's probably going to get worse as it goes i don't use social media at all like just to post something that's regarding my company that's a team that i have that do it or sometimes i do it personally at first i used to do it personally but now i have people who do it for me uh, so we just put something very specific to our work and something very specific to my work that's about it i don't I don't believe in check-ins. I I like to have a personal life. I I don't I don't give a crap if people want to see my photos. I I don't want to put my photos. Here. I just have a, a personal display picture that everybody can see what my face looks like if they want to know what my profession is. I would rather have a LinkedIn profile than I have a freaking full-blown Facebook profile. And I only have people that are work-related. It's just like staying away from social media has helped. Um the more you sit down and the more you're kind of consumed by it the more those things start to get you that who watched your story and who didn't like and who liked and and what did he say and what was the tone in which he was saying it you know and why did he send me a heart in this one and why did he send me a smiley in this one that's like bullshit to me it's like you would rather focus on your work than what's written on on a post if somebody wants to say it's good work you will they'll probably end up telling it to you or if they don't they'll have their reasons not to I don't care. I just want to move on to the next thing. I'm not that good enough that I should be getting applauses from everybody. I just want to be better at what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. You mentioned that we anyway have to agree that we all have our personal demons, right? Um uh, but uh do you think we have to fight them? Do you think we have the possibility to do that actually or there's no way for us to get rid of that? I think that that's the challenge of life. Mm. Uh that's how I see it. Like if you overcome that part, uh you can be whatever you want to be. But if you get consumed by it, then you you shouldn't complain to anybody because you couldn't fight it. Even the sanest people have the craziest insane ideas or insanity going on inside, right? So that that to me is the demon inside you and you need to learn how to tame it and control it. and and take it out when it's necessary and you put it on a leash 
is is what's important. If you don't put it on a leash, it's just going to go crazy, and you probably will never get organized. You will never be self-disciplined. You will never be able to learn anything. So mm-hmm. for me, the, the 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 biggest thing, it's not like going up. You know, like earning money, uh, um, getting the fame. Things happen for a reason. You keep on doing it. Things, like, you know, money. If you are supposed, or if you're destined to get fame, you will. You know, like running after that is just stupidity. Just hone in on your craft. Just work on it. Try to get good, and try to keep on getting good, and stay as humble as possible. Because no matter how good you are, there is always going to be somebody who's better than you. So the day you start thinking that you're the best, that's the day you start falling. That's how I believe that. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something I learned from my dad very early, and uh, and I've always like kept it in my head like ever since. So those demons have to be solved and fought with before you even you know move on or move on to something better. But being a director of stuff, you know, like sometimes you do get harsh on set, and you have to control the chaos on set because there's so many people and so many opinions. and if you're driving through a certain narrative it's very hard to get it into people's heads because you know everybody has has opinions you know you probably you know like stop somebody right now i would just stop somebody right now and tell them that i'm having this interview they would probably have an opinion about this as well you know like why is the camera like this or why are you wearing this black shirt or whatever or they might why do you have a blue everybody has opinions you need to get over that and just focus on what you need As, as an output from it at the end of the day to train your brain fight your demons and move on it's hard it's really hard and we all face that challenge pretty much every day i can't say that i've totally you know uh, like overcome all of the demons or like gone through overcome all my challenges every day there's a new one you know like so it's tough it's a constant battle would you name your kind of last demon that you've noticed in yourself the film i am when you do your own thing uh the the biggest demon is being a control freak if you're an artist you're a control freak you know that's one thing you need to battle yourself because uh if it was for me i would probably still be working on i am yeah even months later i would still be working on it. but you know like battling through it and saying okay this is the best i could do and this is probably the best version and let's just put it out there and move on to the next this is the biggest demon from from that day onwards till today i have not played the film myself i want to keep my head fresh so i want to forget that the only reason i'm reminded of i am home for all this these generous nominations and these awards that i received i got reminded of it again and and i felt the need to thank everybody and you know and then you guys reached out for this interview which was uh, amazing and uh, i am not to to camera ready but this is also a demon right now that i'm facing so it's it's difficult but it's been 8 years now and uh, i feel that i have like challenged a lot of my demons and i've come through and uh, i'm happy i'm happy mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. So could you give any advice for the directors who only start their career? Just be you. You know. Don't just be you. Have stick to an idol, just have an idol. Mm-hmm. Have somebody you follow. Study somebody. You know, study their life. Like for me my all-time inspiration was Stanley Kubrick. He still is. Mm-hmm. Stanley Kubrick. And and I have not left a page in a book in a documentary in a video or a podcast that I have not heard. I am obsessed about them. And and while reading them I I I read their work ethic. What worked for me being self-taught is that you should always have idols but follow their craft but don't copy them. Mm-hmm. Because the 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 worst part is that you cannot be as good as they were or are. You will probably do a cheap imitation. of what they did and it would just ruin your career as an artist you know like ruin mm-hmm. your head you know just trying to mimic what they did you know don't be a con artist try to do your own thing try to learn from their principles and try to apply them find your inner voice 
try to engage with people um, that are like minded if they're not like minded don't engage with anybody just stay alone and study 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 the shit out of things observe and study having knowledge and the more you observe and the more you gain will always make you a better film director than you actually knowing how to use a particular software or how you how to use uh, which camera button to push and when you know you, you might get people who know to use the camera more better than you but they might not have the sense to direct you know or frame something compositionally tell a certain story a certain way narratively that's what i'm learning uh, that's the quest i have and i'll keep on doing it social media has kind of pushed them into a to making themselves superstars so they stop following people that were great you know like great filmmakers great artists there's so many i can just keep on naming them you cannot like just put a camera to your face and start believing that you're the best that's just bullshit suddenly you have like 3 million followers it's like now what now what do you do what kind of content are you offering the world all right if you're an artist i've seen a lot of youtube youtubers that do great content that they put a lot of effort into it or the content they make and i would still call them artists because they it needs artistry to put that level of content on youtube but they are very limited people who do that kind of stuff if you want to be a filmmaker as like dude you need to then get off tiktok <laughs> how, do you, how how do you expect to be a filmmaker if you're on tiktok yeah. I'm, I'm, if you're showing people your car or your family on youtube that you're sitting on your lounge having popcorn on youtube how does that make you a filmmaker so when you like study the greats you understand what it meant to them to be filmmakers and and how much of their life they just spent in front of the screen or in a lab or in the edit and they missed uh, their their children's births they missed how they grew up you know like one day he would leave from the house and the next day he would come back so probably his child would be like 4 years old he lost like 4 years of his life that's how much they gave i just think that best the first demon is to like fight this social media vibe you can't like leave it because it also serves a purpose for your business or whatever you're trying to like that's how you reach to the world uh but you know find inner peace find an idol so when you're alone you can kind of go to your idol and learn from him or what he yeah. left mm-hmm. that's only how you can build a legacy you can't build a legacy by stack like two tiktoks how do you see the future of the company uh, of the plan digital we've delved into production like film production so uh, uh we are a visual effects company that's so sol- that solves visual effects and post production for problems for yeah. films that needed cgi uh, animation everything so we have that and that will continue to grow uh but we now have a film production wing uh which started before i am home and after i am home has kind of solidified mm-hmm. and i would want to push that further into films make good content and try to change what's happening here especially in this country and if we can get some kind of love from the international community as well while we do these kind of things and i'm highly optimistic about the future uh, as a director mm. uh, i want to put more effort into that than anything else mm. do you have any plans as a director already like uh, any projects We've been uh, in production for the past 3 months now um we want to be working on something I can't discuss much but uh, surely it will be shared very soon you guys will be able to see it uh, mm-hmm. a little teaser of what we're doing yeah so name your three favorite directors you actually already did that <laughs> but explain why do you love uh, them exactly Kubrick Stanley Kubrick is my all time favorite I don't have anybody that's above him uh Kubrick for a sense of detail uh mm-hmm. is his staging the way he used to stage his actors uh his, his compositions insane the, the the way he used to create depth in those frames you see a lot of hints in a lot of people's work that have kind of taken from kubrick over the years but nobody can get that level of perfection he was a perfectionist and and uh, i believe that there's nobody better than a uh, second uh, 100% release scott i can say that i've learned a lot from him 
just by looking at what he said uh, his documentaries and stuff and he, his his visuals are so intricate and the level of uh, knowledge he possesses with lighting and because he's an artist his visuals are so detailed and so rich his color palettes are so bold uh, his science fiction movies are like like blade runner today is to me the best sci-fi film ever made the original after 2001 space odyssey third would be christopher nolan mm. christopher nolan for his you know his narrative like the, the the level of command he has over his script and his narrative and his stories i don't think anybody out there is that detailed in his narrative so he has these stories that are so complex and just to like bring that from paper to screen films like inception and uh, films like interstellar they're like super super complex films like the like the dark knight the best example like the way he took this conventional pop icon superhero batman and turned him into a real real person so these are the three directors i feel the reasons i i love them uh, name three qualities that are necessary in the modern society you think Mm. Headstrong, I think being headstrong is the first. Um, the second quality is that you should own a pair of headphones just to kind of block out the noise. Third is just like being focused on one thing and one thing mm-hmm. at a time. Stay away from your phone. That shit will kill you. Um, what was the last piece of art that kind of changed your mind or lifestyle? Or- just your thoughts got uh, accustomed to at a studio i was working at as a as a junior animator and uh, there was this guy who showed me the work of craig mullen and and that just opened another world for me uh, i looked at the work of craig mullen and i was like this is probably i can't even do this in the next 500 years like how is he putting this on that uh, you put your headphones just to kind of isolate from the society do you listen to the music or like music yeah. music so Only... what was the last song you listened to i i just listened to electronic deep house oh uh, really yeah. <laughs> it, it puts me in a, in a in a space where i feel comfortable and i feel like myself yeah. so I, i don't like too many people like if if i'm working if i'm like sitting in a social setting that's something else uh, at first i used to get annoyed by social uh, settings but still there are times when i need my own you know every artist needs their own zone it's always good to have your vibe your vibe in there you know so actually we came to the end of the <laughs> interview it was a pleasure talking to you thank you so much for your time and having me this was great thank you for your time for your answers Thank you.